Hello, everyone. My name is Cédric Dobey, and I'm curator here at the Museo Egizio. I'm here today to present you a very nice object, this one behind me. Uh, it's a pyramidion. So uh, some of you might ask, what is a pyramidion? So usually in ancient Egypt, pyramidion were a pyramid-shaped object made of stone. So it means a square base with four sides, triangular, so uh, joining together in one single point at the very top. The vast majority uh, of these uh, pyramidions uh, were placed at the top of tomb chapels in the shape of a pyramid. Uh, these tomb chapels in pyramid were made uh, of mud bricks and covered with brown clay plaster. The site of Dera Medina has provided us with uh, huge quantities of uh, these kind of pyramidions because most of the tomb chapels on this site were in the shape of a pyramid. Uh, the site of Dar el Medina is located on the west bank of Luxor, the ancient Thebes, uh, who, who used to, which used to be the capital of uh, Egypt during the New Kingdom period. This example of pyramidion, actually here, uh, was uh, actually belonging to uh, a scribe, the royal scribe of the necropolis, Ramose. That man. Uh, it, thanks to his very high position, was one of the most important men, if not the most important man, of the workmen's community, who uh, was actually devoted uh, to work on uh, the, 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 the digging and uh, decorating of the tombs, of the royal tombs of the Valley of the Kings and of the Queens during the New Kingdom period. Ramose was in office during the first half of the reign of Ramesses II, so roughly between 1275 to 1240 BC. Some of you may ask the question, and what exact material is this pyramidion made of? Well, actually, this uh, very pyramidion is made of limestone. So uh, actually, the reason why it's made of limestone is, uh, first of all, because this material was very abundant in Thebes, uh, in, in Luxor, and is still very abundant. Some of you might have been there already, and you can see that uh, the mountains, the surrounding mountains, are all made of this bright and white limestone. But here in this case, limestone, the, the, the choice of the material, is absolutely not random, as in, and it's directly linked to uh, the symbolism of this object. For the ancient Egyptians, the pyramid shape was a solar symbol par excellence. Actually, by topping their pyramid-shaped chapel with a stone pyramidion, such like these ones, the ancient Egyptians were, I would say, enhancing the solar power and the solar symbolism of their tomb. So it was a way for them to reconnect with the sun, because after being put uh, and buried in their tomb. They had no direct access to the sun. But having a tomb chapel in the shape of a pyramid with this kind of pyramidion was a way for them really to be directly uh, the beneficiaries, the direct beneficiaries of the beneficial actions of the sun. In this way, they were uh, revived, they were reborn like the sun every morning. And the orientation of the object, the orientation of the sides, was absolutely not random. So four sides, it's to connect with the uh, four cardinal points, obviously. And of the four cardinal points, of the four sides, the east side was the most important one. Because first of all, it's the one that was lit every day in first place by the sunrise, the rising sun. And therefore, this is the side uh, through which the deceased was reconnecting with the sun in first instance, every day. The decoration of the pyramidion of Hamose is highly stereotypical. Uh, it means that uh, all the elements that you see on it, that you can see on the object, are very conventional, very uh, traditional. So what you have usually is the deceased, 
represented uh, together with uh, a god in uh, the attitude of, of adoration or in the, ador in the adoration gesture. So in the, he's praying, actually, he's praying uh, the god, he's making really a prayer to the god. Then, second thing, uh, the text that you will see that, that are inscribed on the fourth faces, uh, most of them are solar hymns or prayer to the sun. Again, to the rising sun and to the setting sun, this, since this object is uh, closely connected with the sun. In fact, the faces and the sides of the pyramidion function in pairs. So basically here we have four sides, it means two pairs. So the north side is working with the east side, the south side is working with the west side. The reason of that might appear a bit simple, but it's a bit more tricky than just that. So first reason, we can see this as an opposition between day and night. The north and east would uh, represent the day, well, are in fact representing the day, in opposition to the south and west faces, uh, sides, that are representing the evening and night. But in fact, following what's written on each of the sides, we can also state that the two pairs are also in a position between life and death. As we will see in a few moments, on the north and east side, Ramosé is represented acting as a living person, is represented being alive. So the titles he has uh, all refer to the title he was, where he was having while being in office, so he's the scribe of the necropolis. Whereas on the south and west sides, he's represented as a deceased, he is dead. So the title he has all refer to posthumous titles, all refer to titles he has as a deceased, and he's also said to be an Osiris, so meaning he is reborn in the afterlife, and also after his name, the mention of his names, he's said to be justified, meaning dead. You may notice, by the way, uh, here you see Ramosé in the adoration gesture. He's wearing a long wig and a long pleated dress, all very typical of the Ramesside period. It's also worth mentioning that the elements depicted on uh, the pyramidion as well as the text uh, were originally all painted in color to make them more visible from a distance. So what is actually inscribed on the far side of the pyramidion? Well, let's start here with the north side. The north side shows actually the scribe Ramosé standing and facing Ré Orarty on the east side, right over there. So the text begin right here with Adoration to Ra, when he rises in the horizon to the east of the sky. And the dedication starts here. By the scribe in the place of truth, the top of the pyramidion, Ramosé. And then the dedication at the lower, in the lower bando of this side, by the one who knows the Mahat and keeps it in his heart, the scribe, the excellent in knowledge, Ramosé. And here on the east side, the god Raorati is standing on the sign of the horizon, so meaning that he dominates the sky. And he is hence facing Ramosé on the north side. These two sides actually represent the sunrise phase of the pyramidion. So what the text says at the top, Ra Orarti, the great god, the lord of the sky. And in the lower bando, we have the dedication by the one who is useful to his majesty, the beloved of his lord, the royal scribe of the necropolis, Ramosé. So here on the south side, we see Ramosé standing up and facing the god Horus Hatum, 
located on the west side of the Pyramidion. What the text is saying here is adoration to Ra when he sets down in the horizon of the west of the sky by the Osiris, the scribe in the place of eternity, the top of the Pyramidion, Ramose, son of Amenemeb, justified, meaning he's dead. And then the lower bando, the dedication, by the Osiris, the honorable, the Imaru of the necropolis, the scribe, Ramose, justified, meaning he's dead. And finally, on the west side, we see the god Horus Atum, then seating in resting position against the western mountain, which is the domain of the dead. And thus is facing Ramose on the south side. This actually, these two sides represent the sunset phase of the Pyramidion. Text says, Horus Hatum, Lord of the two land, the one from Heliopolis, the great God. And then the lower bando, horizontal, the dedication, is by the scribe who is right in all disputes, Ramose, and it's very difficult to see, but is also mentioned to be justified, meaning he's dead. So now that you know a little bit more about the Pyramidion of Ramose, I think that you uh, may think of coming to the museum, and please, I encourage you to come and see it live for real with your own eyes and then bearing in mind everything that you just learned today and you heard uh, you will be able then to fully understand and fully appreciate the uh, Pyramidion of Ramose in the Museo Egizio. Thank you.